Hi everybody and thank you for tuning in on this video. Today we're going to talk about a book that Roy Burns wrote that he sent me a long time ago. To give you a little background information, one of my former students, uh, Nick DiVirgilio, had gotten an endorsement with Aquarian and I had contacted Roy and we had a great conversation. We knew a lot of the same people and uh, he sent me a set of Aquarian heads to try, which I loved. And then he sent me a bunch of his books. Now, the only book I was familiar with at that time was the Finger Control book, and we had discussed that. But of all the books he sent me, I found this one, One Surface Learning, very useful in teaching, and also useful in playing, and I'm going to go over why. In my previous video about stick control, we were talking about different levels. Now, um, a difficulty that a lot of beginners and intermediate players have is that they're playing too hard. And they don't get dynamic levels. If you're going to be doing a lot of ghost notes and things of that nature, uh, some of your greatest drummers have that ability and use it very well. It gives them great dynamic range on the drum set. And that's very important. Now, each exercise in here has five steps. The first step is an actual stick control exercise. It's a little different, though, the way, the way it should be approached. And uh, I had discussed this with Roy. Now, I also do variations on these with the students that are not in the book, and I'll take that up in a minute. If we take a basic paradiddle like you had in stick control, in my previous video I said you start out bouncing on a full bounce. And that's a full bounce. What you need to do when you're applying this to the drum set, not only to the hands, but with the feet and the cymbals as well, is you have to apply different levels, and this is where it gets difficult. So if I'm doing this paradiddle, and I put an accent on the two, all those notes are going to kind of blend together. You're going to hear the accent, but you're not going to get the subtlety of the dynamic. So if we drop the level of bounce, which is something I discussed in stick control, doing it maybe two inches or four inches or six inches, a half bounce versus a full bounce, or as quiet as you can, then you get a balance. You get, oops, there we go. Now the problem that the beginners and the intermediates have is when they do the accent and have to do and up, like one, two, that and, if you hit too hard, it's hard to control that bounce and get it to quiet down. Versus, and that's not going to sound good on the drums. I'll demonstrate the, the, uh, this on the drums later. So just taking this first exercise, the way it should be approached is not playing it loud. Playing the regular notes that are not accented at a low volume and a low height. That and up is the point of control that those people have. So it's a skill that you have to work on. Dynamics bring so much more color. Uh, when you listen to drummers from James Brown, Clyde Stubberfield, David Garibaldi, uh, Bernard Purdy, Steve Dead, any of these great drummers, it doesn't matter who they are, they all have control over dynamics, and that is very important. Okay, so one more time. So you notice the strokes are here for the cymbals. Now you notice I'm using the thumb here to make the accent, but it doesn't matter, even this one. So notice I'm just doing this with a little squeeze and then I relax on the end up. It's just a tap, see? And I'm loose here. So that's going to be the problem most drummers face. All right, now we'll do some drum variations and I'll show you how I use this book uh, to teach. And also, I'll have a demonstration with a student of mine. She's 10 years old, and uh, she and her parents gave me permission to put her in the video. And she's going to execute one of the exercises in the book. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put everything on the drums. So to reiterate, the first exercise was... Now you're going to find that could be very loud if you don't use dynamics on the drums. So... That's step A. 
Step B is you put the base room on one and three, you want to get a balance between the two, between the two and the one and the three, the two and the four, and the one and the three. Like you do in stick control, you can tap your foot on the one and the three. So you want to get this balance where they stand out. So those quieter notes build tension underneath those accents. And then step C would be putting that pattern here. Like that. Step B is now we're going to add something else to the bass drum. It's important to do these and not just jump to the hi-hat. Because you want to listen for the balance, okay? So these other notes... Now this seems louder, but don't forget these are muted right now. So what I like to do for variations is start using uh, shup sounds or flanges on the hi-hat. So here's the here's step B with that. Okay, I'm gonna jump to the next exercise, I believe. The next exercise is this. It starts to get a little more funky. Once I have that down with the student, I'm gonna have them transition from here to here and back. That could be challenging, but there are different ways to do it. And then you're on one here. Now you could use that as part of the groove, or you could segue back to the hi-hat. Now notice I'm going to only do two and four here. You could also do one, two, three, four. Once you get two and four down, and also one, two, three. Okay, so let's go here. That's a variation where you're using the hi-hat against the cymbal. Now in the book it doesn't tell you to do that, but I find it very helpful and very useful because you're going to be doing transitions from maybe verses to choruses where you'll need to do that. That's generally where a drummer will make the change to a cymbal from a hi-hat and back. Dynamics again. Okay, so one more time. sounded slow. And then you can do little fills. step I start to do with students once they've gotten mastery of going back and forth is using different fills and coming in and out. We're going to segue now to my 10 year old student. Uh, she's a fine young lady, uh, super talented. Her father started her on some basic drumming a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago. He brought her to me and then we've been working on much more complicated stuff. Um, very talented. She can play open, close. She uses, you know, both hands to keep time. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. And so here we go right now. All right, you start when you're ready.
right, the previous one we did was exercise C in that same pattern. So we're going to do it now the variation on exercise E. So when you're ready, Millen. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Also, I want you to stay safe out there and don't forget, don't stop practicing. Okay?